Okay, regular viewers, we are back, and happy Thanksgiving. I hope everybody had a wonderful time. This is uh, pre-Thanksgiving, but the video will be out post-Thanksgiving, which is definitely that way. Pre-Thanksgiving, post-Thanksgiving, today. But anyway, um, all that to say, hope you guys are thankful uh, or realize what it is that you're thankful for and uh, have told the people you're thankful for uh, why you're thankful for them, and you got to enjoy some good family time together. That being said, on to this week's project. This week's exciting project is uh, clay. That's right. So my kids and I were playing with some clay just the other day. Does that rhyme? Yes, it does. Um, and of course, uh, I made a fish. Uh, my son made this really cool shad right here, my eldest regular assistant. And we already made a mold of it just so that he could try that out. Um, so that was pretty snazzy. And that uh, came out pretty nice. So I made my newest version of my wedge tail shad. And I already made a mold of it to try it out. And it looked like this. So um, this piece of clay, uh, I think this was like an oil-based clay because it, like, it wouldn't dry. But that was not a bad thing. I made, uh, so I raided all their art supplies. And they had this craft wire stuff, which is like super malleable. And I made a, you know, fish shape out of it. Something like that, you know, but a little more shaddy shaped. And we're not going to demonstrate the whole thing this week. But if you can picture, you make a shape like that, right? You know, and then um, and then cover it in clay, mold it to the shape that you want. This one has a little bitty eye sockets in it. And then I covered the whole thing. Uh, you can see there's a bit where I cut it off right there. And you can cover the whole thing, or I covered the whole thing, rather. I, over here. Uh, covered the whole thing in uh, epoxy, two-part epoxy, to try and stiffen it up for the mold. And that was marginally successful. Um, when I put it in the plaster, um, it was fairly hard. And then I think the moisture from the plaster um, really got into it, even through the epoxy. And uh, it became like pretty malleable again, and it was kind of difficult to take out. You can kind of see on the tail right here. Uh, but anyway, let me tell you about this new lure. This is like my secret new lure, so secretive that I'm showing you uh, what it looks like. I was almost all totally prepared for this video. Almost. I thought I was, but I just messed it up. But yeah, two and a half inches here. Um, and you can see it's a little bit wider than my other shad uh, as far as in the belly. But it's got a little more mass on the head. And it's more triangular shape down the body. Now, remember, this one kind of got a little misshapen when it came out of the mold. So the tail and everything doesn't line up like it used to could. Um, but yeah, a nice flat top. And then down to a thin belly right here. So I did already take it out fishing to try it out. And... To be totally prepared for this video, it actually caught fish, and we're going to roll that beautiful bass footage right now. Hey, regular viewers, that new jig works. Nice little bass here. But what I caught it on, I rigged it on, was my new, uh, which you saw in the last video, my new jig. Here that I made um, and there's part of the, what's left of the tail it kind of got a little beat up but um, it actually swam really well and it was perfect for this whole application so I was concerned that this jig here wouldn't catch fish because the weed guard would be too weedless I did trim it down a little bit because I was nervous about it even before I took it fishing so it does hook a fish so I've caught two bass on it I got a picture of 50% of them which is one um, but it does swim real nice this tail I can't believe how easy it is to make this wedge style tail, guys. You got to try it. Um, if you can see this, you know it's very, uh, very triangular. Um, you know, basically two pyramids, long, narrow pyramids that are put together, and uh, it flaps. So, you know, the uh, making the wedge wedge tail, which has a really nice flap. Uh, I'll try to show you some video of that here.
is just super easy to do. And uh, this shad even looks better than my old shad uh, that I was making a bunch. So in this video, though, I want to make more of them. I made this one mold here just to try it out. Uh, it's a top pour mold, so I could bang out the fish real quick out of it just to see if it worked or not. And uh, we are going to try to make a large mold with six fish in it, okay? I poured these already, laid them out uh, to try and uh, see how they would fit in our mold. And, um, and I think it's going to work fine. So we're going to get our friend Plaster of Paris and get busy. And we're back real quick before I get going on this. So uh, what I did here was when this, came, when this comes open, the sprue is attached to the fish like so. Look at we can pretend that we just poured this one. Ta-da! Okay, isn't that fancy? All right, so the sprue is attached to it up here. And these came out really cleanly. In fact, you can see the, uh, the little metal piece down here that came out in the mold as well. So, um, anyway, I left the sprue on it. I was going to cut it off, and I was like, wait, why don't I just use that as my injector port like that for the new one, right? So, see that fits right in there, like so. So, rather than using the other little piece of wood that I've been using for a sprue, I'll just leave the one on there that's already there. So, that's less work. Um, so, I'm going to put it up here. I guess I could put it in the middle. I'm not exactly sure. I don't think it. I don't know if it'll matter or not. For uh, you know, we can do that. We can reposition it there for people who are concerned about sy symmetry. I do think that um, I may need to carve into the mold a channel from here to here. Okay, and then these fish, obviously, their tails are going to act as the channels that feed these fish, and these are all going to be connected. So it's just going to be cutting those out right there. Um, so I'm trying to do this with as little with as uh, little waste as possible, and uh, make six fish all in one shot. And I have room to go for more, but this one is uh, you know it only holds this much here. I think they, they call it like 45 milliliter, and apparently it has an eye stuck to it. I just noticed that. That's funny. Um, so I don't think it'll hold more plastic than that. Or much more plastic than that so because uh, I could have room probably for two more um, but I don't want to push it other than pushing it like that you know but that's a bad dad joke so anyway now we're gonna get the plaster Paris and we're gonna get to it I'm sorry and my youngest regular assistant is over here uh, practicing with her roller skates and she had something she needed to add when I said that I had six and I could have put two more what were you gonna say that would be eight shots. Thank you for the fast math. All right. High five. All right. Go roller skate. And for those of you who haven't seen my first video where I used this as a sprue, this is a uh, two-inch shad that I, swim shad that I carved out of uh, this piece here of wood. Um, and this tail doesn't look great at all. Um, the top of it broke off, you know, while I was trying to carve it. Uh, but I did sand it down and coated it with polyurethane, which is the best plaster mold release. Uh, this acts as a hook slot, and then I have a corresponding one. But anyway, all that to say, even though this tail is ugly, uh, it still flaps like the Dickens. Uh, not that that's a measurement of flappage, but it does. And, um, and this catches fish, too. So, And you can see, I'll put them side by each here so you can see the comparison. This tail is definitely bigger, so you definitely get a little more flappage out of it. Um, and you can see the body of this shad is just a little shorter than this one here, um, a little narrower in the belly, and uh, a little broader on the uh, on the. Oops, as I drop it, a little broader on the top. Okay, um, and this is that soft plastic that that makes. That wasn't like a magic trick. I just I had this one already, so. Uh, this is the shad this one makes. This is the new shad here. Uh, I understand these are ugly colors, but I wanted a color that would show up really well here, just like in the first video um, that you get really be able to see. So this is our uh, this is our new guy, and this is the original. This one still works, and I'm still going to use it here. Uh, I just wanted to see if I could improve the design, and I think this one fits the bill that I'm looking for uh, a lot better. So. Um, so that's progress, right? 
So, and uh, for symmetry's sake, I realized I may just throw this one in this mold when I put it together, just so that it looks prettier, more pleasing. And pro tip, guys, before you uh, go ahead and you know when you're when you're when you're putting uh, out your mold like this, positioning it, laying it out rather, I guess, um, it's a good idea to take a photograph of this because when it comes time to pour the plaster, uh, that's you don't want to. Oh golly gee. I cannot remember uh, what it was I had. So if I, I, I usually, you know, you're probably smarter than I am, but I take a photo of it. That way I can remember uh, where things were and how exactly I had it laid out. So it's not like I'm trying to put the puzzle together while things are hardening. But I think, again, like this, I'm going to carve two channels into the mold. I guess I could put a little piece of dowel here and here, but whatever. Um, that'll work too because uh, what's great about Plaster Paris is it's very forgiving and uh, you can manipulate it like that if you want to. So. I keep threatening that we're going to get the plaster and get busy, but then I keep remembering stuff I wanted to say about it. Okay, regular viewers, the moment you've all been waiting for, or I guess I've all been waiting for, um, the uh, Plaster of Paris part. Everyone's favorite, Plaster of Paris by Dap. Not sponsored. All right. We're going to need a full cup of water for this one. with our precise, scientific, engineered measurements here. We make up the uh, pancake batter consistency plaster Paris. Well ventilated area again. One of my regular viewers had uh, advised me to wear a mask while I did this. And I appreciate the concern. I am well ventilated though. I have fans going, fanning me. To blow the dust away so it's not just sitting here in my face building up in my lungs but it is so nice all the subscribers who are so concerned i appreciate that and if you'd like to be a concerned subscriber please feel free to click the subscribe button and that's about as obnoxious as i can sound that's the regular letter i'm sure i can get way more obnoxious than that but i do appreciate all the support everybody Thank you so much. Thank you already, regular viewers out there, subscribing, liking, commenting, and all that other stuff, encouraging me to, you know, forge ahead, excelsior, ever higher, right? Um, probably not what that poem was about, but that's not important. Okay, I think that's a good bit of plaster there as I add more. Okay, that's good. Let's go and remove all of our mold masters again i took a picture of that so that i would recall with my simple mind what it was that the mold looked like we're going to take our petroleum jelly I like that long dramatic pause to say that word i don't know why that happened and uh get the corners of our mold here just to kind of keep everybody where they're supposed to be when they're supposed to be there this is screwed together, but um, tolerances aren't perfect because it's just plywood that I found on the side of the road. Okay. Beautiful. Okay, so now we want to get these bubbles out. I showed it in other videos, but for the new viewers, hopefully there's a lot of them. Fingers crossed, right? Um, over here, I have a, a little air compressor, and um, I plug it in, and I'll rest this on top. And while it's compressing the air, of course, it vibrates a lot, and that helps shakes the bubbles out. Pro tip for you. So we'll be back when this thing is all ready to go. Okay, so our mold box has set up plenty hard out here. We'll take our awl, and we'll remove, remove our locators. This did get just a little bit ugly. Ah, there we go, but it's okay. No points for no extra points for style. Hello, if I could please. There we go. Get that out of there. Um, okay. I did find right as it's set up, and I'm so sorry I didn't share this with you, but I found this little plastic straw deal that I had that was a part of uh, I think it was a part of your kite, but don't worry about it. Yeah, you broke it anyway, so it doesn't matter. But uh. Anyway, here, put those back in the locator, in the, in the locator cup. 
Let's dump out these little pieces. Oh, yeah. Our mold's made in America. Remember the straw from that straw there? So, yes. Uh, and this straw, the point of this straw is to distribute uh, in the in the mold that we're making, it's going to distribute plastic out uh, to the sides here and out to the rest of the school of fish. Okay? Um, we got some uh, residue on this guy. So before we get too deep into it, we're going to scrape that off, hopefully, in a perfect world. And there we go. You know the straw down here? I do know the straw right there because I just talked about it. That was actually featured in another one of our videos. It was featured in another video. The best weedless bass lure. Oh, yeah. And it still is the best weedless bass lure, by the way. I still contend that it is. I think it beats the pants or legs off all the frog lures on the market. Uh, check that out if you want to go see what is the best weedless bass lure, in my regular opinion is the Moss Boss, the modified Moss Boss, the MM. MM? Yes, modified Moss Boss. Oh. All right, we are going to now take our uh, friend Petroleum Jelly. And we're going to spread him. And we're going to spread Petroleum Jelly about this mold, hither and thither, so that it does not stick to the other side. Can I get in on this, or you just want the whole thing? <laughs> Yes, you can get in. Thank you so much for your assistance. You're welcome. Ooh, okay. <laughs> ah, I think I, I think I just turned myself into a plaster mold. Okay. Oh, good. We can rub it on the wheel. Yeah. We have a rag. Like we got a whole bunch of rags right over there for you for your for your wiping pleasure. <laughs> well, I didn't see the point in wasting all that petroleum jelly. Plus, it's another one of the expensive products that we use here on regular dye. Did you eat a lot of ham today or something? Why? What? You're acting awful, awful hammy. Hammy? Yes, for the cammy. <laughs> um, I did eat some turkey from Thanksgiving lunch, that is. Turkey lurkey? Yeah, turkey lurkey. Hmm. I think we should ask something from somebody we know. So let's, I'll ask it right now. Regulator, will you please get cue the musical interlude? All right, good answer. Dap, plaster of Paris. Or as they say in France, or Paris, Yiso de Paris. How do you know that's French? Uh, I saw Excuse the me. day on it. The D-E. What day is it? No, that's how I pronounce it in French. Are you you speak that? French? What? I only knew that part portion. The only French you know is how to say plaster of Paris? Yeah. Yeso de Paris. Wow. Pretty snazzy. Unless that's Spanish, I'm not sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thinking, it has me thinking it's French because it's the D E, or you see, so it D -E? It right here under Plaster Paris, the other language version of it. You saw that D E. I did saw that D E. Oh, okay, I think some, we're there. Some plaster actually spilled in there. All right, so we're going to try to pour... Uh, I'm just thinking, like, you can do, like... Look at this. You can make, like, a whole Alabama rig in one press if we do it right. If we get this right. Big if. I know a way you can modify an Alabama rig so you can catch multiple fish on it. Well, that's the whole point. Trying to get the bubbles out. While it's still thin. You could actually add hooks to the other teasers that don't have hooks, as they're called, aren't they? Some of them are. Some of them have teasers without hooks, but... Oh, wait. 
my favorite tool to get yeah. bubbles out of it. Yeah. Thanks to a... Thanks to a subscriber who told me this, yep. yeah. Thanks to all you guys out there. This channel would have, wouldn't have been possible. That's right. It would just be some guy in his garage making jokes into the void that no one else would hear. That his regular assistant would think we're just lame. Wait, that's our normal life. Wait, what? That's our regular life here. Um, I, I, see, a, I see a little bit of a issue what? with the... Uh... Because I knew you were coming, so I... Bet you a big bucket. All right, the regular assistant, go wash that out for me, please. Yes. As they say sir. where we live. All right. Okay. So that's good. I'm going to let it set up, and we will come back for the great unboxing, everyone's favorite part. Or at least I hope so. Nobody's actually said it's their favorite part. I guess there's a lot of assumption going on. You know what happens when you assume. Okay, regular viewers, our Made in America mold has dried. As you can see. It's not coming out, so let's the great unboxing commence. I'm forgetting my magnet, which is now covered in hooks, so now it's deadly. Ta da! A nice flat surface down here. That should be enough to get it out of the mold, hopefully. There we go. Okay. Pieces out of the way. Da, 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 da. The school of fish. Allegedly. The school of fish. It's all greasy. I can't imagine why. Somebody greased it all up. Probably unnecessarily so. This may need some tapping. <laughs> Unlike if you guys saw the shrimp film, the mold that just fell apart, I was hoping we'd experience the same amount of fun with this one, but uh, not so much. So we did put a lot of uh, goo on it. There we go. Not my most graceful <laughs> and elegant unboxing. But the end result's all that matters. And clearly this fish came right out this time, so that was an improvement. But yeah, you were supposed to be over here with your friends. I don't know what happened there. But good looking mold. Uh, fair amount of bubbles on this side. So we'll have to talk to the engineer there. Uh, trying to limit the number of bubbles over there didn't work. But again, I don't think the bass will notice. It'll be all right. Let's get this out of here. Beautiful. Those came right out. We'll put them on the magnet thing like they're going to stick to it, I guess. But these fish will come right out. No problem at all. There we go. Okay. Flop those over there. Man, I think we got a school of fish. So if this works out, we're going to have seven uh, shad, seven super shad in, uh, in every press here. Uh, when this dries, if you guys haven't watched this before, if you have, we're just going to carve out these little areas here and um, allow the flowage of plastisol through those channels. But other than that, I think we're there. Looks like we're done. I'm going to put this up on some uh, stands so that it dries for the night, and uh, tomorrow uh, we'll, uh, we'll try to shoot it. It's, I mean, in all intents and purpose, we could probably do it right now. But I want to let it dry just a little bit more because sometimes they're a little bit fragile, Italian, uh, at this stage in the game. So, okay, so I put it up on these uh, painter's pyramids here. Allows for airflow underneath so that it can dry more thoroughly. Like so. And we'll let it sit there for the night. And, um, Check back in the morning, carve it out, and then shoot it. See where we at. Okay, so when last we spoke, 
the uh, mold was ready here. Um, well, it come out of the, the box. Anyway, we were talking about carving these channels. I let it dry overnight uh, here on my painter's pyramids so that there would be airflow underneath it and over top of it. And I can feel, um, just from using this stuff so many times, I can definitely feel that it has uh, lost some weight because of the release of the water. So, unfortunately, it's not a hot and sunny day out today, so there's no reason to leave it outside. One of my favorite tools to carve this stuff with is just a uh, small size flathead screwdriver. And again, we don't have to go crazy. We just want enough to uh, allow for the flow of plastisol into these voids. I have this here uh, one inch paintbrush, which I permanently borrowed from my children's art supplies to further this cause. Helps brush the dust away. So this again is I haven't made a mold this extensive before. Uh, with trying to you know make a whole school of fish here, so it'll be interesting to see how this comes out. This side here did get more bubbles in it than I would like. But it appears that most of them, other than, aside from these two fish right here, really have a lot of them. That's three, not two. Fast math. I don't think it's necessary, but I think it's probably best to have uh, free flowing all the way through here. I am concerned that um, you know some of these fish may fill. So hopefully that will, uh, or, or fill easier than other ones, I guess. So hopefully that will help with even distribution of the plastisol as it goes through the mold. Like, you know, maybe like fluid seeking its own level kind of situation or equalizing pressures. I don't know. Fluid dynamic type stuff. I'm sure I've got it all wrong. I am not, repeat, not the engineered angler. I'm just a regular guy. If I was a smart man, maybe like an engineer, I would have thought about starting to heat up some plastic just to see how it does shoot. So we got to try to make a school of fish. So we're going to get the microwave going and start heating some stuff up. This is the ugly color we were using yesterday, and it'll probably work again for today. Again, I like it because it's just, uh, well, I have a lot of it, but also it's very easy to see. So. And we got to put on our favorite mold release. Especially before you get to know your mold. It's kind of a weird sentence now that I say it out loud. It's pretty important to make sure that you're going to um, put some mold release on any areas that the flashing might uh, occur as well. That way it uh, will come off. Nice and easily. You won't have to be fighting it. It does it tend to stick to the plaster pretty well, believe it or not. It actually took me way too many tries to figure that out. I kept, I actually ruined a couple molds. Um, especially if you're, you're doing remelts with um, like really heavy salted plastics, like uh, was it Yamamoto stuff there. That stuff is extremely salty when you uh, go to remelt it, you just gotta be mindful of that, but it will really stick to these plaster molds even worse. Um, in fact, when I use that stuff as a remelt or in my remelts, I'll a lot of times um, just kind of pour off the top. That salt will uh, settle to the bottom of your cup. And when you go to let it cool down, you can actually, you know, cut off that bottom section right there and actually remove a lot of the salt from it. it settles really low like the last you know uh quarter inch or so i never salt my plastic i don't find a need for it i know why they do it it makes the plastic uh, sink further as they say but also let's not kid ourselves there regular viewers the trick is if i add you know 
five pounds of salt to a gallon of uh, plastisol, I get more plastisol. And salt's cheap. So, I mean, good on them. They're those, they sell uh, millions of baits every year. Should probably turn on my ventilation system that I always tell you I have. While our plastic's heating up, now that our mold is lubricated with the mold release, I'm going to make sure this guy fits in it. Yep. Perfect. And uh, you might have noticed I kind of just rammed it in there. It's kind of acts like a reamer. Because, again, Plaster of Paris is so forgiving. Now I've made a, I don't know if you can see that there, I've made a pretty tight seal all the way around um, to help for the Plastisol squirting out the top so that it can be pressurized and go into the mold where we want it. And you see that I oftentimes will brush around the top, especially when the mold is new, because when it comes out again, you know, it's going to settle right there and you want to be able to remove it. But we set it up and we get our clamps going. You do have to be careful uh, with over clamping a new mold, a plaster mold. I've cracked them like that, especially if they're not really square. Um, so you got to be careful. If you get like, you know, these kind of clamps right here, you can apply a pretty decent amount of force when you, you squish it like that. You can actually crush that plaster, uh, especially if it's not fully set. So be careful. These ones are just enough to really kind of hold it there. Um, I have one of the, the really big, like man-sized ones of these, uh, and uh, they'll crush it as well. Plastic's getting there. It's much easier to melt when it's chopped up, but unfortunately I didn't get a chance to do that to this cup. Okay, I think our plastic is ready. Yep. Looks good. Let's glove up and shoot this mold for the first time. I don't know if that worked. I didn't get quite a steady little push, so trying to do it on camera may have messed that up, but we'll let that cool and I'll let you see what the first attempt was. Okay, this mold was pretty cold, so Hasn't been a long time, but we'll try it anyway just to see where we're at. It doesn't want to open. There we go. Wow, we got all of them, I think. This is not the world's worst fishing uh, style <laughs> open here. Um, but yeah, uh, it did fill the whole mold, so that was good to see. Um, we need to hold pressure more. Like I told you, I didn't think that it did as... Uh, it did it completely because like I had to like stutter to get it in here and we got a lot of flashing mostly at the top though so we're gonna recycle all of these guys you can see there are missing some here as they sunk in from being cold um, but all in all not bad I'm glad it works so I'm not gonna use these ones here I think we can get a better one if we shoot it again but, we, I mean, we got seven in one press, so that's like a whole Alabama rig all done. But uh, let me uh, lubricate this again, and we'll be right back. So we're set up again. Uh, this one, I am not going to uh, try to press it on camera because the camera was in the way. So uh, I have a limited workspace here. But I promise you I'll show you the results. Okay. This is our second shot here. This one went much smoother. I could feel the, uh, I don't know why I put my gloves on, it's cold. <laughs> Rookie mistake. Okay, uh, yeah, much smoother. I was able to hold pressure for quite a while. So we should hopefully have a better result. It's funny how hard this one holds together compared to the other molds I've made. It must be all the ins and outs. Sheesh. I definitely can't open it nicely like World's Worth Fish Fishing. Okay, so uh, still some problems here. We got voids here. This fish is good. This fish is good. And it looks like this fish is good. But we did not get four of them. We'll see if that is a continued problem. It has to do with their location. 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 
this mold could probably use uh, or could stand to be warmer uh, when it was used. So we'll try that this time. We will microwave it, see if that helps our cause. So here's my third attempt. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I got a little bit of leakage out of the bottom here. Looks like it came from that side right there. So I don't know what the deal is. We'll see how this one came out. Okay, let's hope third time is a charm here. That was kind of funny how that thing came out. The uh, I left the injector hanging out of the top just so that it would, uh, you know, I guess kind of keep pressure for me. It fits so nice, it just stayed there. But we got this huge old piece of spillage that came out. That's quite impressive. Okay, this mold came open. Look at that! I think we did it, folks! Regular viewers, I think we got it. Very happy with that. Seven fish, seven usable fish in one press. An entire Alabama rig with a couple to spare in one shot. Just took a little bit of getting used to, like I said. So I've never impressed a mold... Uh, Quite like this. I don't know if those big gang aluminum aluminium molds uh, are this difficult, but I mean, there it is, folks. There's the injector. There's the two injector ports. That's all we got for waste for seven fish is this right here. This little guy. Cool. Almost looks like uh, something you could use like a Cinco kind of thing anyway, but whatever. Couple little nubs that need to get trimmed off of these guys. But there we go. Like I said, they need just a little bit of trimming around, a little bit of flashing. Look at that. That's a whole school of fish, man, in one press. Pretty cool. So just with two presses, <laughs> we got all these lures to use right here. So. I'm not mad at that at all. Actually, there was that guy too. Whew. That's plenty of fish. So let's get this up again. I got a color in the in the uh, microwave over there that I actually want to use. And uh, not that there's anything wrong with that. My my uh, father would love that. That's <laughs> he's uh it's very simplistic uh, when it comes to making these colors. In that, so much as like he knows the bass. And that's where I learned it. The bass don't care. Um, they'll they'll eat it. He will catch fish. He'll outfish me on stuff that looks way worse than that. Uh, colors that work, look way worse than that. His favorite color is, uh, you know, everything combined, basically. So nothing wrong with it. But uh, I want to do try to make them look a little fancy. You know, mostly, mostly for you people. That's right. I said it. So I'm going to get this here uh, ready to go again. Microwave my color over there that I'm looking for. And then we'll be back. There you go, regular viewers, a whole school of shiny shad. We're going to clean these up, of course, and I'm going to put some finishing touches on them, but man, whole school, one pour. Look at that. Well, regular viewers, I think we can call this one a success. That is 14 fish in two pours. Pretty impressive. Not toot my own horn. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just glad it worked out. This was super easy to do, guys. You guys could do this yourself. If I can do it, you certainly can. Now we're going to pretty these things up, make them look a little bit better. Uh, clean this little flashing off, of course. Cut them out, and then we'll uh, be back when, uh, when they're all prettied up.
Hey, what are you kids doing? <laughs>